in Epistle St. Paul says in the first Thessalonians um, chapter 2 verse 19 he says to the church for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing isn't even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming for you are our glory and our joy the grace of God the Father be with us all Amen. as we mentioned on the liturgy uh, on Friday that our church with great joy and we our, our Abuna Lo Asidarus departed to heaven and as we say there is no day, death for your servants but a departure and the words that we read for example today he is telling the, the church that he is rejoicing when the steadfast in the Lord that he that the people of the church are his crown are his joy and this shows a true spirit of a servant and Abuna Lo Asidarus uh, lived like that uh, Abu Naloa Sidoros was a true man of prayer and when we speak of prayer one of the saints said the man who prays knows God and he is known by God for those who speaks they can go in the back and continue talking Kiro 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 yes I'm here Abuna here So again, one of the saints said, the man who really prays is the man who knows God and he is known by God. And Abu Nalua um, was like that. He didn't pray just reciting some Psalms, but he lived a deep, real life of prayer. St. Ignatius of Antioch said, let no one deceive himself if anyone is not within the altar. He is the pride of the bread of, the bread of God, the bread of God, the bread of life. St. Ignatius says, the person who is away from the altar, he is away from life. And Abu Naloa Sidarus, his life was centered around the altar. He lived the Christian life that is centered around the altar, that was centered around, uh, around the Eucharist. And he always say, when we come to the church, the priests and the people, we cast our problems on the altar and we receive from the altar a divine power. One of the priests told me that he saw Abu Naloa in a dream while Abu Naloa is still alive. That was in February. So that Abu Naloa told me that I saw Abu Naloa in a dream and he was wearing his priestly vestments. And he told that Abu Naloa, Abu Naloa, do not forget that you receive your power from the altar. And the priest in front of the altar intercedes for his people and the people prays for their priest. And that priest was talking to Abuna Tadris Ya'ub and he told them Abuna is accurate even in his dreams. In the dream Abuna was using intercede because the priest is a presbyter. He intercedes and the people pray for him. When Abuna Bshoi Kamil came to LA in, 19, in, in, in the 70s, Abuna Lo'a was sad. So he sent him a letter and he said, Abuna, I miss you. I was raised by you. You were the reason to know God and to be in the service. So Abu Nabshoi Kamal told him, Abuna, do not worry because you and me, we meet on the same altar. Every day you pray here in, you pray there in Alexandria and I pray here in LA, we meet each other. So the altar is not just, a, a, is not a table, but it is as if we're standing in front of the throne of God. One of the saints said, only a life of prayer and meditation will render a vessel ready for the master juice. It means that if you want to be a vessel that is used by God, then you have to be a man of prayer. And Abu Naloa Sidarus used always to say that the person who does not pray does not have any goodness in his life. He is unfortunately poor and he uses to focus on the importance of prayer, especially um, especially for the servants and the priests. He truly was able to demonstrate for, for us the great life of Pope Carlos VI, how Pope Carlos was, was a true man of prayer. And prayer opened the doors for him towards heaven. That's why when, uh, when one of the priests asked him about his relationship with Pope Carlos 
and Abuna Bashur Kamil. So he told him, Abuna, uh, do you feel the presence of Abuna Bashur Kamil? So Abuna Lua Sadurus, is this a question to be asked with his way of looking at a person? And we know, and maybe the days will come, we know and we know for sure that Pope Curlis used to visit him a lot and, um, and Abuna Bashur Kamil um, used, used to visit him a lot. Also, he was a very good person of gentleness and sweetness. One time I was in the monastery, and forgive me if I'm saying some personal stories, but I was in the monastery of St. Macarius and I was walking and I found someone saying, hey you, why you're here? And I looked back and it was Abuna Lua. And I told him Abuna because I was raised here, like, like Utsak have a deep relationship with the monastery of St. Macarius here, I'm the same. So he was all gentleness. He told me, Tab, can you please go to the church you're going to find Tasuni Nadia, who we sent her deep condolences. And we thank her and all the family, Arsani and Mir, for all what they did for Abuna and with Abuna. So he told me, go to Tasuni in the church and bring her to that place where, where they meet uh, with the guests. Also, Abuna Loa spent few hours every day, as, as I was told, with some of the people who are close to him. And as Abuna Tadris Ya'ub told us, he used to spend hours with the Bible. That's why when you look at his uh, sermons, they are very deep. We met him in 2016 after the Feast of Resurrection. It was Bishop Carlos and two of the priests. And then he asked, he said, do you know when Joseph went to Pilate asking for the body of Christ? So we told him, Abuna, yes, of course, we know. He said, it's like when Joseph went to Pharaoh and asked it for the bones of his father. The new Joseph of the New Testament went to Pilate and asking for the body of the new Israel. The new Israel who came to save humanity. And then he said, like when, when they, they, they were going to put Christ in the tomb, they put linen cloth. And he told us that the high priest you're to wear like a, a linen cloth and a stole and a belt and a crown. But when it comes the day of uh, this Yom Kabur, uh, as we say, the day of atonement, the high priest takes off everything and he goes into the holy of the holies just with linen cloth. Exactly like when Christ went to the tomb with linen cloth. And when God accepts the sacrifice of the people, the high priest comes out and all the people rejoices. And our Christ, our true high priest, went into the holy of holies, not with a blood of animals, but with his own blood. And he found for us eternal salvation. Abuna was able to connect both the Old and the New Testament. Abuna Loa also was a man of holiness. And one of the, the theologians said, Holiness is rejoicing in the gift of God that he gave us through partaking in his life. He made us partakers of the divine nature as the, as the blessed St. Peter says. And sanctity is the fruit of that intimate relationship with him. And holiness in the life of Abu Naloa was the true meaning of holiness in the life of any Christian. It was a fruit of his, uh, of his unity with God. Holiness for him meant living a very serious spiritual life. And holiness for him to his kids is to live this serious spiritual life. But if you stumble, quickly go back to God. And God will forgive your sins and he's going to sanctify you and make you holy again. And he used to always say that repentance fills the person with joy. That's why when, we, when, when anyone meets with Abu Naloa, he, he can sense the spiritual joy that used to come and spread out of him. Also, Abuna Lua was a true father. And anyone who deals with him, he feels like he's so special. Like he feels, I'm, I'm the most loved son by Abuna. And fatherhood in the life of Abuna Lua was not something that he gained, was not something that he, that he has, but it was a reflection I mean, it was not some ethic or a virtue, 
but it was a reflection of the fatherhood of God himself. And as God loves sinners, Abu Nalu, I used to love everyone. Um, one time, one of, the, one of the priests I know, who was waiting for his, his paperwork so he can go back to Egypt. So he called Abuna and he told Abuna, Abuna, I'm waiting for a paperwork so I can go back to Egypt. I do not care about going to Egypt more than I care about going and spend some time in the monastery. So Abuna looked at him and he said, don't worry, it's going to come. But that person said, according to the time limit, it's not going to come. And I, I'm not going to be able to go and to the retreat this year. So after a few weeks, his paperwork came. And Abu Nalua heard, but that priest said, of course Abu Nalua is not going to remember that he was praying for my paperwork. So Abu Nalua on that day, he, when he knew by one of the priests, he called that priest and he told him, why didn't you call and tell me that the paperwork is done? I'm, I'm still praying. I'm praying and, and your paperwork already, already came. And when he was in the monastery of St. Macarius and he heard of one of the monks who was traumatized because of the departure of Amba Epiphanius, he asked one of the monks and he told him, can you please go and call Abuna so-and-so and ask him to come and meet with me? I just want to make sure that, that he is fine. Because at a certain point, that priest was his son uh, in confession. If you look at the sermons of Abuna Lua, you will see the depth of orthodoxy. You will see the depth of a person who dedicated every moment in his life only for God. Uh, one of my dear friends, who is, al who is also a child of Abu Nalua, sent me a sermon, and it was the sermon on Great Friday. So in this sermon, Abuna is encouraging the people to repent. So Abuna, I translated it from Arabic, Abuna was saying, do not let anything deprive you of hope. Trust that God is always opening his heart and his bosoms for you. You might say that I am not righteous or innocent, but I am justified through the sacrifice of Christ and his blood. Yes, I am a sinner, but my sins are forgiven in Christ. This is the true understanding of sin and salvation and justification in Christ. Yes, I am a sinner, but my sins are forgiven. I am not a justful person, but I am justified. I am justified in Christ. One time I was with his kids, who was one of Abuna's kids, who was far away from the church. And in Holy Week, went to a place to grab some food, and that person asked it to eat meat, because he almost doesn't believe in God anymore. And on our way back, we played a SoundCloud clip. Abu Nalua speaks of the prodigal son. And that person started to cry. And he said to the, the person who was with him, can you please call Abu Nalua and ask him to pray for me? And glory be to God forever. Amen.